Now, reaction to these changes yesterday, to the education maintenance allowance for 16 to 19 year olds that's been announced by the government. You will remember we had Nick Clegg in here last Friday, who said he wished people had stopped going on about EMA going, because as yet they'd not announced what it was going to be replaced with, and it was going to be replaced with something just as good. Well, funding for poorer students has been reduced by two thirds to £180 million, but the Education Secretary, Michael Gove, says that the new system will be more targeted. On the line is Harrison Carter. Um, Harrison is a uh, member of the UK Youth Parliament. Morning, Harrison. Morning, Toby. Uh, what do you make of the uh, replacement for EMA, Harrison? Well, I think it's a, it's a welcome move by the government to realise that, uh, well, to realise something that headmasters, that schools, that people receiving EMA have been telling them for so long that it is a needed support mechanism for people. It does get people back into school and colleges and it does raise young people's aspirations. I would now set three challenges for the government. One would be to review the proposals that they've just put in place um, and ensure that they're not just as a result of um, political unpopularity that they feel the need to introduce them again. To understand that the amount of support given to some people on this new discretionary fund might not be enough for them to fund stationary, for them to fund transport to school, for them to fund their education. And number three, to ensure that those who do get it uh, will, will benefit from it. Um, this whole issue of EMA, has, I think, has been a complete mess for the government. And they haven't... Um, consulted properly with anybody on the ground and that's the reason why it, it, it became so shabby. I mean, and the thing is, and I put this to Nick Clegg last week, I don't... The, the, the current government, the coalition government, could be accused of not being very good at communicating stuff, but they did say, didn't they, when they, got, when they announced that they were going to get rid of EMA, that they would have something to replace it. Now, most people, I would think, would say, well, you should have had it ready at the time so they wouldn't have had people yeah. on the streets, but they did say they were going to replace it. They did. Um, my fear was when they said that um, they didn't have any plans, didn't have any specific plans to put in place to replace it. What they're saying now, obviously, with the discretionary fund, I mean, there is a guaranteed fund for those 12,000 young people who will receive £1,200 a year who aren't able, uh, who are sort of on the, on the poorest side of the, the spectrum, and, and I say I welcome that. But the discretionary fund, they're saying to schools, they're giving schools an extra burden, an added responsibility to, um, to, to decide who should get this. But they haven't necessarily trained staff to assess people's need and to give out a payment. Um, so in that sense, there is a risk that those who need the money are not going to get the money because people aren't trained to give it them. And just tell me I was asking something that I, I possibly don't understand. The, the, leaving age of sc the school leaving age is to be raised to 18, isn't it? Yes, yeah. So what will happen between 16 and 18 to things like school travel and school meals? Well, between 16 and 18, I am... Um, if you, if you get them free at 15, will you get them free at 16 when it becomes compulsory to go? Um, I, I'm not sure if that would be the case. Um, uh, I don't know. But, I mean, we would hope people would get them free um, at that age, and also we'd hope that those who do get the free school meals would be offered the guaranteed fund instead of the discretionary fund. We need to look at that. Harrison, thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning. That's Harrison Carter. Uh, he's 17 years old. He's a member of the UK Youth Parliament. Travel Update. BBC Radio Sheffield.